The king has returned. The prophecies fulfilled. But this king is not who we were looking for. This king brings justice. He brings peace. He is the answer to the prayer we did not know we were praying. Long live the king. The king is dead. The hand that once held a branch now gripped a hammer. The king is dead. This king of kings who embraced the very nature of a servant. This prince of peace broken for us. This commander of angels surrendered to a cross. This king joins us in our suffering, empathizes in our weakness, and he calls us to die with him, to lay down our lives, to live in surrender that we may be fully alive. The king is dead. Long live. This king is not gone forever. Good evening, church, and welcome to our Good Friday service, a day where we remember the crucifixion of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the ultimate price that was paid for you and I, that we might have life and have it more abundantly. We are so grateful for this prize for the sacrifice. And I know that our lives will never be the same again. So I'll open the service with a word of prayer. Father Lord, we thank you for a day like this where we can remember the ultimate display of love that you showed on the cross of Calvary. We are grateful for it and we just want to say thank you, Lord. And we pray that as we Go through the service, Lord, that our lives will never be the same, that you will take absolute control. You will cause our passion to be renewed for you. You will cause our love to increase and our commitment to increase as well. Father, we ask that you will just enthrone yourself in the service and take all the glory. Father, thank you because we know you have heard us. Amen. I will now like to invite you to join me as I pray for our nation. We've been praying for revival for quite a while and today we will do the same. I just want to ask you, wherever you are, just lift up your voice and pray for the nation. The scripture that I will read from is Psalm 80 verse 3 and it's simple. It says, Restore us, O God, and make your face shine on us, that we may be saved. And that's the prayer that we have for our nation. Father, Lord, we just want to say thank you. As we lift up our voices in our various homes, praying for our nation, Lord, we ask that you will restore it. We ask that you will shine your face upon our nation. We ask that your Holy Spirit will hover over this nation and cause the dark cloud that looms over it to be removed. Father, we pray that you will visit us in every way. We pray that this nation will return to its first love, 
that father lord god almighty your banner will be lifted high again in this nation that the schools will gather to pray before they start their classes that the hospitals will hold hands and pray believing you for healing that lord it will not be an embarrassment to say that one is a christian that your praises oh god will just be all over the nation. Father, we ask that you will restore it to its original status and calling, a Christian nation that it is, oh God. We ask that you will remember the sacrifices of the missionaries before our time, oh God, and you will use that to just have mercy upon this land and cause it to fulfill purpose and fulfill destiny in the name of Jesus. And at this time when we battle the COVID-19 pandemic, oh God. We ask that you will heal our land. We ask that you will visit us, oh God. We ask that you will have mercy upon our land. We have cried out, we are crying out, we are seeking your face. We humble ourselves, Lord, and we just ask that you would heal our land, that your name may be glorified. We pray, oh God, for those who are already affected by this virus, that Lord, you would have mercy, that you will cause them to recover. Father, we say no more deaths in the name of Jesus. We say, let there be restoration, let there be healing, oh God. We know even in the midst of all this chaos, you are working out a plan. You have a purpose. There's something that you want to achieve. And we ask that you would do just that. But Lord, we still cry out for your mercy. And we ask that your name be glorified through it all. We pray for our prime minister, that you will visit him, you will heal him, you will heal the elderly, you will pour out your protection, oh God, over this nation and those, oh God, who are in the front line, our doctors and our nurses who are risking their lives, oh God. We ask that you will cover them with your, with your mighty wings, oh God, so that no weapon of the enemy fashioned against them prospers in Jesus' name. And the people of God in their homes say aloud, Amen. I would like to invite you to just join me for a few minutes as we just worship our God who paid the price, the ultimate price for our salvation. We give him all the glory. We give him all the praise. So lift up your voice and worship him. Give him the glory. We praise your name, oh God. Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before the world began. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what your worth. You laid behind a stone You lived to die Rejected and alone Like a rose Trampled on the ground You took the fall And thought of me Above all Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, 
Oh, you were here before the world began Above all kingdoms, above all thrones Above all wonders the world has ever known Above all wealth and treasures of the earth Oh, there's no way to measure what your word. took the fall and thought of me above all crucified you laid behind the stone you lived to die rejected and alone like a rose trampled on You took the fall and thought of me above all like a rose trampled on the ground you took the fall and thought of me you took the fall from me you pay the price for me you made a way for me lord i worship you oh we're grateful 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 thank you lord we're so grateful thank you lord a beautiful worship song that just uh um, it tells us of the, the awesomeness of uh, Jesus going to the cross and, and, and dying for you and I. Um, how grateful we are that our Lord laid down his life in that manner. Um, but before we go on to, to share communion and share from the Word of God, I wanted us to do something that uh, we have been doing as a church, and not just us, um, literally every church in the Redeemed Christian Church of God and we found out loads of churches across the world um, God dropped it into my heart um, unknown to me he was dropping it into the hearts of so many pastors all over the world and what is it we do uh, we pray the scripture out of 2 Chronicles 2 Chronicles seven fourteen, and then we declare that scripture and there's power there's so much power in our words when Shola and I do it, we're very symbolic. We open our windows at uh, 7.14 a.m. and 7.14 p.m. And we speak into the atmosphere. We speak into the atmosphere over this nation. We speak the word of God. And there are tens of thousands, possibly hundreds of thousands now, of people who are doing it all over the world. And I am certain it is doing something significant. And so we're going to do it together today at 7.14 uh, p.m. in a few seconds. If you get yourself ready, we are going to together declare the word of God and believe that it will achieve the purposes for which it is declared. Um, will you say these words taken from the word of God to Chronicles, 2 Chronicles 7.14 with me? O Lord, we are your people called by your name. We humble ourselves, we pray, and we seek your face. We turn from our wicked ways. Hear from heaven, O Lord. Forgive our sins and heal our land. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. And together let's make this declaration. 
we declare that our land is healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. So it was as simple as that. I want to encourage you to do it. 7.14 a.m., 7.14 p.m. Just make that de- say that prayer and make that declaration and let us believe that the word of God will not return void. It will achieve the purpose for which it was spoken. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Today we want to talk about Jesus, our Passover lamb. This week um, started on Wednesday, the 8th of April, Wednesday evening, um, and will end on Thursday, the 16th of April in the evening. It's Passover week. Jews all over the world will be celebrating Passover. Um, They'll be celebrating that most significant of, of events that took place in their history where God showed himself mighty on their behalf. Now, this week as well uh, uh, is, Holy, what, is Holy Week. Um, started on Sunday with Palm Sunday. Um, today we are celebrating uh, the crucifixion of Christ. And um, in two days we will be celebrating the resurrection of Christ. The Passover week is the most important Jewish holiday it, it, it celebrates and commemorates that mighty deliverance of God of his chosen people, Israel, out of the hands of Pharaoh. Uh, in one night, uh, God, after plague after plague after plague, uh, breaking the grip of Satan or Pharaoh, but then, of course, it was, it was from the pits of hell, breaking the grip of Pharaoh over the children of Israel. Um, by the time it arrived at the time of the 10th plague, the death of all the firstborn uh, in Egypt, uh, on that particular night, as the angel of destruction went through the land, uh, because the children of Israel had obeyed God's instructions to kill a lamb, take the blood of the lamb, um, dub the blood of the lamb on the lintels and the doorposts of their houses and to stay in their houses because they had obeyed that as the angel of destruction went through the land striking terror as it took the firstborn of every family in Egypt every time it got to a house that was marked by the blood of the lamb the angel of destruction would pass over that house and that house would be spared the destruction that was going through the land, the loss of the firstborn in every family. Hence the term, the Passover. Um, and at the end of, of that, uh, that night, uh, with, with, the, with the destruction that had come the way of Egypt, um, Pharaoh relented and released the children of Israel. Uh, Their neighbors gave them gold and silver and jewelry and valuables. And the children of Israel were released by Pharaoh and they started their journey uh, towards the promised land. The Exodus began. The Bible tells us three million men. Um, That probably means five, six, seven, I'm not not sure how many million. uh, If you add the women and the children were released from the grip of Pharaoh in Egypt, and they began their journey towards Canaan, the land that God had promised them, the land that was flowing with milk and honey. Um, This is the most significant event uh, as far as the Jews, the children of Israel are concerned. Until today, it is celebrated that mighty deliverance of God where he rescued them from Egypt and the nation began as they started their journey towards God's promises. Well, in a sense, the Passover prefigures or is the shadow of the substance of the crucifixion of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, The crucifixion and the resurrection are the foundation of our Christian faith. The crucifixion marks the deliverance of God from the tyranny and the slavery and the oppression 
of Satan, of his own chosen, his own elect, uh, delivered them from bondage to Satan, where he held all of us in bondage, and delivered us so that we can enter his own promised land for us, because God does have a promised land for us. The promised land he has for us are the promises that are contained in his word, the Bible. And the Passover, for me, is such an encouragement, especially at a time like this. Um, and it's, 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 I don't think it's unintended by heaven that in the midst of this pandemic, um, at a time when the world is faced by an attack that is from the pits of hell, that we can celebrate the crucifixion of Christ and then in two days the resurrection of Christ. I also don't think that it is unintended that at this same period, um, the Jews, uh, where we get the foundation of our faith from, are also celebrating the Passover. Uh, the Passover, for me, is a pointer. Uh, uh, it helps me, encourages me to grasp the reality of the crucifixion. And you'll be amazed at some of the similarities, some of the things in the Passover that prefigure uh, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Um, it's interesting that the overthrow of Pharaoh was attributed by his own magicians to the finger of God. The finger of God is uh, um, a metaphor for the power of God. Uh, the children were set free by the power of God. Um, in Exodus, the 8th chapter and the 19th verse, uh, the Bible says, This is the finger of God, exclaimed the magicians to Pharaoh. Um, they, what they were telling him is that these things are a demonstration of the power of God. And it's interesting that Jesus himself uses the same phrase when he wants to declare that the demons are being overthrown, like uh, the kingdom of darkness is being overthrown by God. Luke 11, the 20th chapter, he says, But if I cast out demons with the finger of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. You see, it was all about a, 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 a contention of power against power. And the power of God triumphs for the children of Israel in Egypt. The power of God has triumphed for us today and will continue to triumph for us, even in the midst of this pandemic that we are faced with. The Passover centered around a lamb. The children of Israel had instructions from God. Each family was to take a lamb. Um, the lamb had to be a year old. It had to be without blemish. That means it had to be perfect. And they were to kill the lamb following certain instructions. And then they were to apply the blood of the lamb to their doorposts and, their lintel, and the lintels of their homes to stay in, the, in their homes. And when the angel of destruction went through, it would pass over because the blood was upon their houses. Uh, the lamb was to be killed in a particular way. The bones of the lamb uh, were not to be broken when the lamb was killed. Um, and then once that was done and they were, they were given instructions as to how to eat the Passover meal uh, without leaven, the bread. Once they ate the Passover meal, then the angel of, the, uh, the angel of destruction, seeing the blood on the lintels of their homes, would pass over. Well, our deliverance from the kingdom of darkness, our deliverance from Satan, centers around a lamb. That was a regular lamb, but our lamb is the lamb of God. John announces it in almost dramatic fashion in John the first chapter and the 29th verse. The next day the Bible says, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look! The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That was the introduction of Christ. Introduced as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Um, a Lamb in a natural sense uh, delivered, the blood of that Lamb delivered them from Egypt. Uh, we have our own Lamb in the reality of the Passover. The Passover prefigured it. But the reality is what we celebrate today, the crucifixion of Christ, the Lamb of God on the cross crucified for, for you and I. 
Um, he was a perfect lamb, exactly how, in the same way that the lamb that was used for the Passover was a perfect lamb. Um, the Bible says in Hebrews 4 verse 15, referring to him, this high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, thank God for that, for he faced all of the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. He was a perfect lamb in the same way that the lamb of the Passover was a perfect lamb, one without blemish. His bones were also not broken. And this is in, this is this, these are the things that make the Bible exciting. That where, where, where prophecy is fulfilled, where you can join the dots in the Bible that encourage you to believe it. Because the tradition was that when people were crucified, um, to make sure they were dead, you know, they'd be hanging there for hours, to make sure they were dead, those who crucified them traditionally, it was the norm, broke their bones, broke their knees, in the, their, you know, smashed their kneecaps and broke their bones to make sure they were dead. If they didn't respond, then they knew they were dead. That should have happened to Jesus. But listen to what the Bible records, because of course, the, the, this, this had to follow the Passover so that it, the Passover generally prefigured, helps us understand, you know, the, the enormity, the significance, the power of this crucifixion. John 19 verses 33 and 34. John 19 verses 33 and 34. The Bible says at the end of the crucifixion, but when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead, so they didn't break his legs. One of the soldiers, however, pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water flowed out. They should have broken his legs, but because the Passover lamb had no bones broken, our own Lamb of God also had no bones broken. He delivered us from slavery and bondage. The children of Israel were delivered from 430 years of slavery in Egypt, oppressed by the Egyptians, second-class citizens, servants serving the Egyptians and serving, serving Pharaoh, helping Pharaoh build all his great cities. The children of Israel were delivered from that back-breaking toil by the significance of the Passover. Immediately after the destruction in Egypt and the children of Israel uh, were saved, they were released to go and fulfill their destiny in God. We are delivered from slavery and from bondage. You and I are delivered from slavery and bondage. That's part of what we celebrate today, that we are no longer slaves to Satan. No child of God should be sport for the enemy. No, you have been delivered from the grip of the enemy. You are no longer in the kingdom of darkness. He has no right over you. You are now in the kingdom of God. You are now a child of God. The Bible says, Jesus says in John the 8th chapter and the 34th verse, I tell you the truth, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. You are no longer a slave to sin. You can do away with that sin. The, 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 the cross of Calvary, the death of Jesus Christ, has broken once and for all sin's grip over you and Satan's grip over your life using sin to make sure he accomplishes his purpose of holding you in slavery. The Passover lamb delivered the children of Israel from death. Death was roaming the land. But because once death got to their houses and saw the blood, the angel of death that was bent on, on destroying, on killing all the firstborn in the land passed over. You also have been delivered from death. And in this season, I want us as we celebrate this meal, by faith, the currency of our kingdom, to activate this covenant as long as your assignment on earth is not over, I declare to you by the blood of Jesus upon your house. And don't forget that houses, the way God sees them, are no longer houses that are built of bricks. You are the house. The resident in that house is the Spirit of God. He resides inside you. As long as the blood of the Lamb of God is on your house, on you, I decree that the angel of death and destruction will pass over you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If your assignment as given by God is not over, 
then no pandemic, no virus, no coronavirus, nothing else will be able to stop you from staying to fulfill your assignment here on earth. The power of life and death is not in the hands of a virus, neither is it in the hands of a pandemic. It is certainly not in the hands of Satan. It is in the hands of God. And if God has an assignment for you that you haven't finished, I decree to you that you are going nowhere because God is in absolute control. It delivered them from their death. It delivers us from death. It delivers us from death here on earth where as long as God says you're not going anywhere, it delivers us from an eternal death where in the life after we are separated from God. For we know, of course, like the Bible says, the wages of sin is death. And if sin was still our master, then we, would, we were dead and we would be dead in eternity. But we've been delivered from death. I believe also that part of the benefits of that Passover night was a healing and a restoration of the bodies of the children of Israel. How do I know that? Well, I deduce that from the Bible. The Bible says in Psalms 105 verse 37, and I'm reading the Good News Bible. It says, then he led the Israelites out, they carried silver and gold, and all of them were healthy and strong. Now. I'm not sure all of them were healthy and strong prior to the Passover. There must have been those who were infirm, those who were sick, um, those who were ill, those who were afflicted by diseases. There must have been. But I believe something happened that night as they were about to embark on this journey that, that, that the Spirit of God strengthens them, strengthened them, restored them, made them healthy, healthy, made them strong. One translation says that none of them was feeble, none of them was infirm, none of them was weak, that something miraculous happened. And if the Passover lamb could, could do that for them, how much more? The lamb of God that was slain for you and I. Is it any wonder that the Bible records in Isaiah 53 verse 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. Let's activate that by faith, the currency of our kingdom. Let's believe that this meal we're about to take is going to release God's healing grace. I declare that by this meal, and you are watching, you are, you're infirm, you're feeble, you're weak, you're sick, you're fighting some sickness or the other. It might be the coronavirus, or it might be any some other affliction. Let us believe by faith. May the spirit of faith come upon you now to cause you to rise up in your spirit and believe that this meal is going to release the supernatural healing power of God. It's going to come upon you and by his stripes, you are healed. If they left with the blood of a lamb and when they left, they were all healthy and strong. I declare that you also are healthy and strong in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, where this meal was instituted by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, um, the Synoptic Gospels, some of the Gospels uh, uh, tell us that it was instituted where Jesus was celebrating the Passover at a Passover meal with his disciples. And I think that's, 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 that's critical. It's instructive. It's a pointer that this meal that would foretell the future was instituted at a meal that was celebrating the past and celebrating what happened in the past. For me, that's a pointer to what this meal would do in your life and my life. The Bible records it in Matthew 26, from 26 to 28. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread, blessed it, then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples. Matthew 26, 26 to 28, saying, Take this and eat it, for this is my body. And he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and said, Each of you drink from it, for this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. 
It confirms the covenant between God and his people and is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. And so tonight, as we, or for some people who are going to be, who are watching this and it's not night where you are in this, in, in, the, in that part of the world, well, at this meal, we are going to celebrate this covenant. And as we do so, please let your faith be increased. The currency of the kingdom of God is faith. Is that trust in God? Can you trust God that all the things I have spoken about, the deliverance, complete deliverance from, from any activities of the kingdom of darkness, uh, the healing of your bodies, the forgiveness of your sins, that all those things will be confirmed and more by this meal we're about to take. Will you stretch out your hands in faith by believing? Let the hands of faith reach out to receive the supernatural power of God that is released by this meal. Um, when Paul celebrated it, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 26, for I pass on to you, Paul says, what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you're announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. And so if you would get your, your elements ready, um, wherever you are in the world, um, your bread uh, that is symbolic of the body of Christ and the wine that is symbolic of the blood of, of, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And then we're going to eat this together and then we will, we will spend a few minutes praying that, that, that the supernatural power of this meal be released into our lives and our bodies in the name of Jesus. So Father, we thank you for this meal, O oh God. Lord Jesus, we thank you for enshrining it as part of our walk with you. Lord, we know that it's not a ritual. We know that there is spiritual power in what we're doing. And today we celebrate it, Father, on the day that we remember this awesome sacrifice of your son as he allowed himself to be oppressed and beaten and spat at and pierced and eventually nailed to a cross. Lord of heaven. It could not have been in vain. It must have been for times like this, Heavenly Father, when there's fear around, when the enemy is seeking to torment your children, that we can, we can celebrate our victory and establish our victory by the meal that we're about to eat. And so, Father, bless, O oh God, the sacraments the elements that are being used wherever they are in the homes of your children. Father, let these elements release supernatural power to bring to pass your intention, Lord Jesus, as you were hanging on the cross with each of us on your mind. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this bread as we declare it is blessed and the bread that is, or the other elements that are being used in homes all around this world is blessed. We eat it, Father, and as we do so supernaturally, we release all that Christ intended as he laid down his life for us. We release, Father, particularly now, the, the power of healing. By his stripes, we were healed. By his stripes, we declare that healing comes into everybody that desires it, even as we eat in the name of Jesus. So let's eat together. And Father, we want to thank you for the precious blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This blood, O oh God, declares our forgiveness of sins. It also, Father, declares that we are covenant children and you are a covenant-keeping God. As we drink, O oh God, we activate the covenant. We, we establish and we re-establish the covenant and we activate the terms of the covenant, Heavenly Father, on our behalf. We declare that sins are forgiven as we repent of them, O oh God. Our own sins, the families of our sins, and we stand in the gap for the nation and the nations as we repent 
of sins by the blood oh God father wash the slate clean heavenly father father we just thank you oh God we drink we drink heavenly father and supernaturally activate this covenant on our behalf in Jesus name let's drink together father we bless you Lord we glorify your name we thank you father for this covenant we thank you for this supernatural meal now why don't you spend one or two minutes and just pray just lift your voice and just pray just declare declare what this meal means to you by the word of God declare that by this meal that you are delivered from every bondage you are delivered from every oppression the works of darkness we put a stop to it in your life by this meal we declare that by this meal you are established reconfirmed established you are you are declaring by this meal that you are part of God's family you are a child of God we declare that by this meal you are delivered from death we declare that by this meal the angel of death must pass over to allow you to finish God's assignment here on earth we declare that by this meal that that your house is saved from every plague that is roaming the land we declare that by this meal your bodies are healed father let this meal deliver us into a more intimate relationship with you heavenly father father we just thank you lord we release the supernatural dimension of this meal into our lives oh god we declare it is not na- not not a natural meal heavenly father but it unlocks the supernatural and we release that into our lives father in the mighty name of jesus our lord and savior and we together we say amen god bless you god bless you i decree over your life that destruction must pass over i decree that the plague cannot come near you i decree that by the stripes of jesus by the stripes on his back that you are healed that even now receive in your body that healing power in the name of jesus i decree that as you pursue the promises of god to the glory of his name you pursue them in good health in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ I decree that as you confess your sins, repent and confess of your sins, you are forgiven of your sins. I I declare that our family we are all forgiven as families of our sins and I declare that the nations whatever nation you're in as you stand in the gap for that nation, repent for that nation, confess the sins of that nation. I declare that because of you, a child of God who's standing in the gap God will never say I looked for a man and I did not find one. He looked for a man. He saw you. He saw he saw a man, he saw a woman. And because of you, I declare that by the spirit of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God, the sins of that nation are forgiven. Uh, by the mercies of God, this pandemic will cease in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God bless you. God bless you. It was wonderful to share that meal with you. Absolutely wonderful to do so. and we just thank god uh, for it and thank god for this opportunity to do so um we are going to go on to worship god we worshiped him in song uh, now we have a chance as we always do to worship him uh, with our substance and i i just want to say a prayer for you that uh, by the grace of god by the mercies of god supernatural provision will be your portion in these difficult times that you will not be able to explain if god could send a raven to feed elijah at a brook in the time of a famine then surely god that same god can surely make provision for you and your family and i pray in the name of jesus that that will be your testimony he will make provision for you his word to you is that he will he will meet all your needs and then give you a surplus so that you can abound to good works that means so that you can continue to be a blessing to others and to the expansion of the kingdom that will be your portion so let's um, prepare to give our offerings we know by now if you're a Jesus house member how to do that um if you're not please don't feel compelled to give absolutely not you can't compel someone to worship and this for us is worship If however you do want to give you're welcome to do so 
Um, the, the, the short video will tell you exactly what to do. Uh, the four ways we give, if you're uh, watching online, you can um, click the give button um, and then it tells you what to do, follow the prompts. If you have the Jesus House app, click the donate but button on the Jesus House app, it tells you what to do. You can give by bank transfer and then you can also give up to the sum of 20 pounds by text. Whatever you decide to give, um, may God bless it, uh, may God receive it as he receives it to the expansion of his kingdom. May he cause a harvest to come back to you uh, in the name of Jesus Christ and may it be used and stewarded uh, wisely by those who will steward it for the advance of the kingdom of God. God bless you. I, I just feel this communion meal was so supernatural. I'm expectant of testimonies from all of you. So let's watch the video and let's give with joy in our hearts. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. God bless you. Well, God bless you for giving. God will bless you for giving, um, for, for being sacrificial at a time like this. Um, as we come to the service, just want to bring a, uh, come to the end of the service, just want to bring a few reminders your way. Um, want to encourage you to please look out for each other, please. Uh, we want to make sure that no one in the Jesus House family is suffering um, at this time. So we want to be uh, uh, the eyes and ears for the church and um, so if you know anybody or, or a family that's going through some extremely hard times then please look out for them uh, and let us know critically um, just just email us member services at jesushouse.org.uk member services at jesushouse.org.uk and we'll take it on from there uh, we have a system in place where we can come alongside we can help in a material sense we can help in an emotional sense, we, you know, we can provide support and counseling and prayers crucially um, for such a family. So please do let us know. Let's watch out for each other. Uh, we've made a commitment uh, as, as leaders in this family that no member of this family will be left behind um, in this, this most difficult and trying of seasons. Now, we also know, um, and, 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 and it's been said, that um, incidents of domestic violence have increased in this season. Um, the reason is largely because people are locked down, confined, um, sometimes to very small spaces. And where the relationships already had challenges, uh, we find that there's a spillover into domestic violence. Now, that concerns us greatly. We don't want any member of this family to be subjected to domestic violence, adult or child. And so we want to say to you to please uh, speak out, you know, make a phone call, send an email to us, um, and it will be handled very discreetly, but very professionally. Uh, it will be handled professionally and spiritually in terms of the prayer, but even the professional handling will be spiritual. These are 
is are people who have the Spirit of God. And we're, we're partnering with um, a, a charity that does this and has a proven track record. It was set up by one of one of us, Pastor Dearly, um, and it has a proven track record of having helped so many in this area. Um, so if you didn't want the church to be involved directly, and we can understand that because of the nature of a, of a family, then we would just simply pass it on to Grace to Graces and they would take it on from there. And we trust them, trust their competence, trust their spirituality. So these are the these are options that are available to you. So just please don't keep silent. And even if it's not you, but you know someone who has been subjected to domestic violence, you will be doing your brother or your sister a favor if you let us know. And then we can step in and come alongside and help and prevent anyone from suffering that kind of oppression or pain that comes and, and sometimes physical injury that comes out of that. So please let us know. And then lastly, want to say, let's look forward to Sunday. It promises to be a very special service. It is a very special day. He is risen. Uh, we celebrate our risen Savior um, and it promises to be special. So please tell your friends, uh, join us in service from your homes online. We're live streaming at 9 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. So please join us 9 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. and tell all your friends. Look forward to worshiping with you on Sunday uh, when we celebrate our risen Savior. The reason we know that we can, we have overcome, we are more than conquerors because he has risen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Uh, have a wonderful two days uh, before we meet on Sunday and celebrate our risen Lord. Bye. As we end, do stay tuned to JHTV for a special Easter program. Relevance Rocks Easter features Michelle McKinney Hammond. It's a musical special celebrating the relevance of Easter and the work of the cross. It's on tonight at 8.15 p.m. That gives you just enough time to get a drink, come back, settle down, and watch the premiere here on JHTV. See you shortly.